Hello everyone, and welcome back to this next video on Bytel Linux. I hope everyone is having a great day. And in this video, I'm going to be installing and reviewing Zorin OS 12.1 Core, which is the base edition. So now, Zorin OS seems to be a distribution that is more geared towards existing Windows or Mac OS users, and that are looking to get into the world of Linux, which is great. And you will see why it seems this way in a few moments. So first, let me go to DistroWatch to see where it ranks among other distributions. And here you can see that it is ranked 6, which is pretty high. And if we click on it, we have some information here. So it is based off of Debian. It originated from Ireland. Now it does support both i386 and x86-64 architectures. It does use the GNOME desktop environment for its base editions. But it also has an LXDE variant which is for a more lightweight experience. Now the release model is fixed, not rolling, and that's about it. So here we have the Zorin OS homepage, which is zorinos.com, and here we have a pretty well put together homepage. So it has some quotes here, looks pretty good here, and down here it claims to be rock solid and reliable, safe from viruses, has a world of apps and games, and very private, which is the case with all Linux distributions. So let me just go to about just to see this, and it says that it started in 2008 with one goal to bring the most advanced technology to, into the hands of everyone. So it did, did start in 2008, but it seems that it just recently started gaining more momentum and popularity. But what we're interested in is the download. So let me just click on download, and there are many different variants here. So the first one is Ultimate, which is our flagship version. It has many more features and but it does cost 19 euros. There is also a business version. And here is the one that we're going to download. This is Zorin OS 12.1 Core. And this is the regular edition. It has all these features here. And you can see that here it's listed that it's compatible with Microsoft Office. Again, that's gearing it more towards existing users. And here is a download. So there's both 64-bit and 32-bit downloads. So you can just click on that. And it will bring you to the source force page. And it should automatically start downloading. So you can here see that it's 1.5 gigabytes, which is a pretty normal size for a distribution. So I'll resume the video when it's done booting up onto my live USB and then start installing it. So here it is booted up and it looks very similar to the Ubuntu installer, which is no surprise, but the theming is pretty different, especially down here. So first you can select your language, English, and then click Install Zorn to install it directly to your hard disk. And I usually select both of these. It saves time and just does everything in one shot. Click Continue. And here is where you want to set up your partitioning scheme. So I have an empty hard disk, so I'm just going to select Erase Disk, but you can also resize your partitions manually by clicking something else. So let me just use this option right here. And just hit Install now. Now it will give you warning, make sure you click continue and make sure you read all these because these partitions will be formatted. So continue and it should start installing in the background. So then you want to select your time zone and then select your keyboard layout. So I'm using the US English keyboard layout and you can test it down here to make sure it properly works. Click continue and then here is where you want to set up your profile. So. I'll just enter in my information here, and then pick a username, and make sure to match all the criteria, of course, and then make a strong password. And then of course down here you can select whether you want to log in automatically or require a password to log in, and then hit continue. And it should just install, you can just let it wait, and I'll resume when it's done. So here it is, it's fully installed now. And as with all installations, you need to restart now and take out your USB. Okay, so here is Zorin OS fully booted up and logged in. So the first thing that I'm going to do is take a look at the default applications. So under accessories, we have journal, calculator, clocks, documents, files, maps, photos, text editor, and weather. And we have some pre-installed games. We have Mahjong, Solitaire, Mine, Sudoku, and this other one. 
the selection is very similar to the ones included with Windows. Now for graphics, we have GIMP, LibreOffice Draw, and a scanning application. For internet, it uses the Chrome web browser, and for mail, it uses Geary, which is kind of odd because in most Linux distributions, it uses Firefox and Evolution or Thunderbird. And then we have the full LibreOffice suite as well as Calendar and Contacts. For sound and video, we have these applications like Bracero, Cheese, PitV, Rhythmbox, and Videos. Now it does have all the default GNOME shell applications here. And for utilities, we have Disks, Document Viewer, Image Viewer, Terminal, all the basic stuff. And then we have a Wine category, which includes Plan Linux, Wine Configuration, and some Wine Tricks application. So we have the full suite here, and we have everything that a Windows user would possibly need on a Linux computer. Now before I dive into looking at some of the applications and launching them, I'm going to quickly check the hardware usage. So we can open up the Task Manager or System Monitor, and click on Resources. And here we can see that it is using a fair amount of CPU usage, about 50% to 80%. Now in memory, it's using a lot of memory. It's using 1.3 gigabytes, which is pretty high for a Linux distribution. Really high, actually. And we actually have some things going on in our network history. It looks like something was sent and something was received. Kind of odd here. Actually, something is actually being sent right now. So I'm not really sure what that is. That's pretty odd, because usually it's all zero. So it is pretty resource intensive. But that will probably be compensated for all the different features. Okay, so now let me look at some of the applications that caught my eye while looking through this list. So in games, we have some of these. So let me just open up Mines. Let's just select 8x8. And this kind of looks like Minesweeper. <laughs> exactly like it, actually. Oh, my dad. Play again. Okay, so that's just a base game. We got that there. Let me open up Simple Scan. I guess this is just a scanning application if you have your printer connected. Okay, now let's load up Empathy, which is our messaging client. And you can set up all your information there. Now let's open up the calendar application. And this just seems to be the regular GNOME calendar, as well as the contacts. Let me just do that quickly. Yep, and you can actually connect to your online accounts through this which is pretty handy, like so. Now we have PitV, and I'm not really sure what the difference is between this and videos. We'll see in a moment here. Oh, interesting, so it looks like PitV is actually a video editor, which is pretty cool, and we have all these different effects, which I think is just really cool, and it's actually included right with Zorn. Look at all these effects, neat. And then we have a screenshot application, which is just the regular GNOME one. And now under Wine, let me launch this thing right here, which is Browse C Drive. And I guess this is just the program files for the different Wine applications. Now let me launch Wine, so I can do Play on Linux, which is the graphical front end for Wine. Now there are no pre-installed applications, but you can easily install one with this whole list of different applications it's currently refreshing. So hopefully that works. And then, let me look at this wine tricks thing. So this just looks like a prefix kind of thing, like an installer wizard thing, which looks good, so we just do install a game. Oh, and then it shows me all the different games that are available, and I guess this is just basically playing on Linux, except you get more of a wizard thing. And finally, let me launch up Notepad. Wow, so we get the full Windows Notepad experience here. It looks exactly like it, kind of XP, and it looks like everything is actually working here, so that's pretty cool. So that Windows users don't have to feel weird when using a text editor. <laughs> So now let me look at one of the most coolest things that you can do with Zorn, which is customization. So if you open up your application launcher, 
and then click on System Tools and scroll all the way down, you have an entry called Zorn Appearance. Now, you can see that there are three main layouts. The first is the one that you're seeing right now, the default one, which has the icons on the taskbar. And then the second one is this one, which gives it more of a Windows-like feel, like this. And the third one is the default GNOME 3 look. So this is what it would look like if you didn't have all these other things. And if you scroll down, you have some icon settings, like having icons on desktop, you can turn these ones on and off. And then the interface, you can either set these window buttons to be to the right or to the left. I guess to the left would be more of a macOS feel, to the right would be Windows, and you can enable and disable animations. Now under theme, you have all these different color schemes here. So this is the default one, you also have like a dark version, and it looks like you have a dark and light version for each different color. And this is kind of like the Windows color personalization options. Hmm, red looks nice. And then for icons, we can see that it is using the paper icons for the default one. Probably recognize that pretty quickly. So now you also have the Unity icon theme, paper mono, high contrast, high color, gnome, and Adweta. Now for application theming, you can use Adweta or high contrast, but in order to go back to the regular Zorn one, you have to go back up to the Zorn section and then select one of those. Now for fonts, we have our regular font selection dialog here, and it actually uses the Roboto fonts, which is kind of interesting, instead of using maybe Ubuntu or some of the Windows fonts. Now for panel, this is what themes this thing up here, or the taskbar. So you can set it to top or bottom, you can set it to auto hide, and you can also set the height of it. And finally, you can set the opacity. So now let's do some desktop theming. So let me right click on the desktop and click change background, and let me look at some of the pre-installed backgrounds. So this is the default one, and we also have some moon ones, some space ones, and some very pretty nature landscapes. Oh, this one looks really nice. Wow. And this is just basically the default GNOME 3 dialog. So nothing different there. Okay, everyone, that's about going to wrap this video. So overall, I do think that Zorn OS is an excellent distribution. Now, even though it is very intensive on system resources, it does keep the animations very light, and that allows it to feel snappy. Now, one thing that I do like about Zorn a lot is that they don't diverge too much from default GNOME 3. Like some other distributions, they just pile a whole different skin on top of it, and it just makes it feel very bloated. But this one, it does provide a lot of options, as shown in Zorn Appearance, but at the same time, you can actually have a pretty minimal and lightweight GNOME configuration as well. And I do like how they have all these settings so that you can tweak it exactly like your existing OS, whether that be Windows, Mac, or Linux. So I do recommend this if you're an existing Mac or Windows user. It's very customizable and very easy to get used to. So everyone, thank you so much for watching this video. Make sure to leave a thumbs up, comment, and subscribe for more awesome Linux distribution reviews and much more. And as always, thank you so much for watching. See you in the next video. I'm gonna go get some more stuff.